Okay, this felt really raw, like I had to get it out. So most of you guys know that, in, okay, that I'm writing a book and I'm going through just kind of editing, final editing and, and submission and stuff and I'm working with somebody. And so I was just feeling out, like I have the chills. Okay, so this is gonna be titled Intervention. Um, this is a, a this is a autobiographical, and I'm kind of probably gonna I'm gonna be because I know the words to my book like in my head of the chapters. I just haven't put them all together. So if it seems like <laughs> I'm I, I I know what I'm saying or it's practice, it's because it is. I'm just feeling out sort of the words. So intervention. Um, I remember the day. It was a Thursday. And this has to do with my life. This actually occurred 2012, 2011. <sighs> hey, it was one of those things I was like mopping and I was like, no, you have, you're on a roll. Like it's a part of this book process. Um, that's, it's amazing, but it has to get done. I'm not being hard on myself, but it must get done. Uh, okay. So. And thank you, Sloan Bella, for fucking having my, it's like my, one of my best friends, Sloan Bella, that you guys see on here all the time, has on her website for like a year that my book's coming out and that uh, it's not out yet. Okay. So intervention, this is not the first chapter. It's just the one that, intervention. I remember the day, it was a Thursday, I taught a morning class. It was weird because my sister still hadn't given me a return ticket. I was supposed to visit her in LA. Her assistant sent me a one-way, uh, like US Airways ticket. I had all my subs at my studio. Um, I'm not gonna do context, cause it's gonna take too long. I was in Miami and uh, my subs for the three days that I'd be gone. Um, I even remember teaching the 9.30 a.m. Thursday class and closing the drawer, there was a bill that was like a, you know, studio, like basic, uh, like energy bill or something. I was returning on, I was supposed to be returning on Sunday. I had two outgoing emails. I did a funny French name I had two outgoing emails to my sister with her assistant CC'd and a loan and tax. Like, hey, can I get that? like time that I'm coming back and stuff. So I also have a dog that's being taken care of by someone, etc. And uh, I remember it was like weird, like I, like why why wasn't the return ticket there? And then she sent a return ticket. I think so I was returning on Sunday. So the, the bill was due. Baby, sit, lie down all the way. Lie down all the way. The bill was due Tuesday. And being that it was Thursday preceding the due date, which was the following Tuesday, I pushed the drawer and left it in there. I left my drawer that no one else, I mean, teachers went to that desk, but you know, I was the sole owner of the studio. Everything in there was mine. I trusted everyone. Uh, <laughs> I didn't think, I never, you know, beside like I wouldn't leave like my panties in there, but you know, bills and stuff were fine for teachers to see over the weekend. Um, that's extra, extra, extern, ex, extern, extraneous, that's extra. <sighs> okay, so that Thursday morning, all I'm really talking about is just that vision of like leaving the studio in my clothes and kind of being like, like I, I've always had, I guess, a thing of not wanting to like leave my street. I remember being like, Okay, okay. You know, like I was excited to spend time with my sister because we hadn't in so long. That was the end of our first eight years of not speaking, which was like 20 to 28 or 21 to 28 and 29. Weird, right? Um, okay, so <laughs> I remember packing my bag. I remember it was about I left in the afternoon on a Thursday. Meredith insisted on driving me. The girl that would uh, follow to do many really, uh, 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 how do I say it? Like to move on, unfortunate actions uh, directly towards me, uh, premeditated. 
This girl had been at my house the week before um, engaging in drugs, sex, and rock and roll. <laughs> I don't know why, that's just in, in the context of the paragraph. So I remember thinking to myself, and this, this became more something that was important to me, like, I, I wanted to get to the airport. I didn't, I don't trust other people's time frames and stuff. Like, I wanted to make sure I was on time. I'm not missing this plane. I'm going to see my sister. I remember having a few sips of wine because I knew Whitney didn't like drinking and I would not be having a sip of alcohol for three days. Honda, no. And so I had a few glasses of, I didn't even know about drinking at the airport then, or I didn't know, whatever. I had a few, I know I had one glass of white wine, which was not regular for me, and it didn't taste right. I remember smoking a cigarette, because I smoked cigarettes back then, outside my back window, da 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 da. So I'm waiting outside, there was a playground right across the street from my place in Bell Harbor. My car's parked, my dog's taken care of, I've got my suitcase, I'm ready to go bring love and try to connect with my sister. My mom had had a stroke two months before that and unknown, unbeknownst to me, my sister and Meredith had uh, connected, uh, Meredith had uh, reached out to her and they had been speaking to my teachers, to my students, to friends, accumulating letters um, Meredith and Whitney, a uh, proper smear campaign saying that I was a drug addict, I needed to go to rehab, that everyone needed to write a letter to help me. I've spoken to everyone that's written a letter since. They were like, it was fucking weird. Like, Meredith took three of my teachers out to dinner and was like, Ashley is suffering from very serious drug and eating disorders, and or drug addiction and eating disorder. And they were like, yeah, or anything, my friend, you were like, yeah, whatever I need to do. Really, if I'm reading some of these letters, like, I had no idea you needed any help, Ash, but like, please go do what, what they say, you know, <laughs> like, and uh, so I remember she, she insisted on picking me up. I wasn't so necessarily comfortable with that, you know, and I'm standing with my suitcase and their son and I was wearing a pink shirt. I had cut my arm because I was riding on a bicycle that my friend and I made a bet it had enough air on the tire. And like, it was an electric bike that Meredith Feinberg fucking stole, by the way. And so anyway, I made it, like I was on my little road, I made a turn and I fell. It sucked. And it was a little bit at a bandage, but that was just because I was going to like public place, like whatever. Um, so, I remember now, like, okay, you'll get to it. Okay, so I'm sitting and like, I'm starting to get uncomfortable. I guess I'm looking at like my Nokia. It's 2011, my Nokia short phone. <laughs> and um, it's a bit uh, picturesque, you know, there's an empty, it's, you know, August, let's call it, I think, August, the first time when I came out here, I went to Beit Shuba, um, 2011. Miami, the sun is hot. <laughs> so I'm standing there with this like fuchsia Lululemon tank top, a uh, rockin' Republic jeans, cause that's what I wore then, and a band-aid on my arm and I was starting to get hot and I was like, what? I was like, dude, are you close? Like, and she picks me up in her black fucking Nissan Rogue. And uh, I was like, yo, we need to get like straight there. Like my, like I like to be, and like, I even said, I was like, dude, please don't worry about driving me. Like I'm annoying. I like to be there like two hours early. I like to get the security and read a book, you know? And uh, so she's late as usual. Like she's just not one of those people that has uh, like care about other people in general. Anyway, that's, that's, uh, she always walked into classes late. She always left before Shavasana, um, not caring the effect of the energy or anything. Anyway, so um, she shows up and she's like, hey, and she's wearing the blue tube top dress. Like she has fake boobs and it's a, like a muumuu, but it's like tight here. And she's always like with so much makeup and perfume and the bleach blonde hair. 
I was like, okay, yeah, we gotta get like the fastest way to the airport, like whatever that way is. And she's like, okay, like, and she, I put my suitcase in the back and I'm kind of pissed, but I'm trying not to show it. And she blasts like one of the most nausea inducing sounds or group of sounds put together I've ever heard. And I'm just like, oh, dude. It's like a pop sort of music, but like, it's, it's, it's trash. It's like, it's just, it's, it's horrible. And um, she's like, do you like this song? And I remember the window was down and I had my hand just feeling the wind. And I smiled and I said, no, I think it sucks. I heard something like that. Or I said, yes, it's great. But she knew my tone. Cause I don't, I'm not inauthentic. I can't really do that. I said either, yeah, it's great. And she's like, what, you don't like it? Or I said, no, it really sucks. And she's like, what, you don't like it? Whatever it was. And then she's on motherfucking Biscayne Boulevard all of a sudden. Wait, the airport, either Lejeune, or 95 South. What the fuck are we doing on Biscayne Boulevard? What are, what are we doing on Biscayne Boulevard? Oh, I have to just make a stop. I, a stop? What's up? Meredith, what the fuck? What do you, I have to be at the airport like 10 minutes ago. We, we don't have time to stop on Biscayne Boulevard. And she's like, I, I, I need to make a stop. And I'm thinking to myself, is she getting fucking drugs? Is that why? Like, I don't know what the fuck is going on, but I don't care. And I need to get to the airport because I have a flight to go see my sister in Los Angeles. Okay, so sh before she's like, just relax, calm down. I need it. I need, I'm starting to have like a panic attack. Like, and I never quite trusted her. And then I, with recent stuff, I guess I, you know, my body could feel all the plotting and planning she was doing behind the scenes. So, we pull, all of a sudden her car takes a right into a gravel motherfucking road. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? And I'm like, for sure she's getting drugged. And I'm like, can you just hurry up? She's like, oh no, I need you to come out and come out with me. I'm like, I'm not getting out of the car. I need to go to the airport. Like whatever you're doing, just do it. She's like, no, I need you to get out of the car. It's gravel road. I step my foot on the gravel. I said, no. And I see Whitney, walk, my sister, walk out. Tears all over her eyes. I couldn't make the shit up. The dude, Arthur, the old guy from Intervention, which I had seen a few times. And I'm like, as if time motherfucking stops. My brain's trying to register. What the fuck is my sister doing in Miami? Why is she so upset? What the fuck is Meredith up to? And is that the motherfucking dude from Intervention? Like, it was just super slow. And I'm like... You know, my brain's sort of like, okay, I guess we don't have to rush to the airport, so drop that priority. Why is Whitney so sad? What's wrong? And I walk up to Whitney, I'm like, hey, you know? And she's like, what happened to your arm? And I'm like, I, I fell on a fucking, I made a bet about a tire thing. I felt, why are you here? Why are you crying? What's wrong? Arthur. The old man, Ashley, would you please come inside? I said, uh, for what? What, what? What's going on here? She's like, I'm looking at Meredith. What in the fuck did you do? What? What? What is this? Arthur's like, Ashley, you don't have to say anything. Would you please come inside? I'm like. For what? <laughs> Meredith uh, and her big boobs and blue moo moo dress. I guess she was friends with this dude. So this is how orchestrated this shit was. She had found this intervention guy. They had been collecting letters, calling friends I hadn't spoken to. Like, I remember the guy was very into nautical. The world of boats. He had boats and bottles. He had boats that looked like he put together himself. He had 
pictures of the ocean, pictures of boats, like maybe boat sail. I don't know, the bathroom could have been like a boat bath. <laughs> Rubber ducky. <laughs> so I'm like, absorbing he goes Ashley you don't have to say anything these two people are something like they coming together and I could his it was like a what's that show Charlie Brown whoa, 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 whoa. I was like looking at all these boats it was very wooden I felt like I was in like the bottom of a boat like someone's boat like sort of um I think there was a window but it was so full of Oh, trinkets. Anyway, and maps and shit. There was a wheel. I remember thinking about that boat wheel. So he's like, would you please have a seat? Would you like something to drink? Or would you like a water? <laughs> and like, vodka on the fucking rocks? No. Um, and Meredith has this like smug ass. I'm like, what the? I wanted to keep. I, I've never wanted to like, let's think. And I didn't, I didn't want to physically hurt her because I've never wanted to physically hurt anyone. I wanted, and I've wanted to do this a lot in my life, open my heart and play TV so they can fucking see the racket that's going on and the bullshit. I was like, and of course, everyone that goes through an intervention says, what I said. Guys, this has been blown way out of proportion. You understand? I was sober. I went through AA, took people through the steps. Um, my sponsor and I worked out that my issue was eating and that um, I wasn't an addict, but that I had an eating disorder. Went to eating disorder meetings went through the steps in eating disorder meetings, took a girl through the steps in eating disorder meetings. And at this stage, 11 years later, I think I'm healing from both the, the, the sickness and the um, prescription or whatever, the medicine. It was, um, I think we all have our, our beautiful, perfectly and perfect cells we go through stages and we each have vices some people eat some people shop some people fuck some people whatever the job of people that fucking love you is not to take away your sovereignty to make you um uh without your freedom so i'm sitting at this circular table I haven't asked the guy yet, but I'm pretty confirmed this is the guy from Intervention. Um, my sister's just bawling, and he goes, we've compiled, and I said something like, what the fuck did you do? Something like that. Like, I'm, like my father always says, you know where you stand with Ashley. And he goes, Ashley, these are two people that love you. Please just listen. And I looked at her, like, I swear, she was like, that's fucking psycho. So she had done cocaine and licked my vagina at my place, my apartment, within two weeks before. The only detail I can't remember is whether the blow was at my house or she brought it. So they proceed to read like 10, 12 letters they had procured by harassing people calling them, taking them to dinner, whatever, telling them that I was in deep trouble, that I had this very, very serious addiction, debilitating eating disorder, and that I needed to go to long-term treatment, and that they needed to sign this letter to encourage me to do what was right. All of the letters almost started with, Ashley, I didn't know you had an issue. I didn't know you had a problem. And then one girl should have lied. And I was like, Do I got an argument with that girl like a month ago. She's like, yeah, Ashley's uh, slept with guys for cocaine. I'm like, um, no, I slept with a guy that sold cocaine. It wasn't for cocaine. We were just seeing each other for a couple weeks. 
get your facts right. <laughs> it was really, okay, looking back, it was funny. It was not cool then. I kept looking at the boats. How am I gonna get out of this? I loved my sister so much. It tore me up watching her cry. And I thought, that, this bitch next to me, Meredith, how dare she hurt my sister like this? How dare she cause a, um, literally orchestrate such a fuck show in my life? How am I sitting in this room looking at all these fucking boats? And how come none of them are gonna get me out of this room? And the last letter was from my sister at the bottom of the, the I just had to sit and listen to the long. I wasn't supposed to like respond. And I was like, <laughs> and uh, anyway, my sister's was like, Whitney, Whitney, Ashley, la, 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 la. Academy Award should have been gotten. This was her best work, her best acting. The best thing she's done in her career was that intervention. Somebody I'm sure has it on video. Will you get on a plane with me at 7 p.m.? Like, and go to rehab. That's what it said at the end. And I'm like, my suitcase is in the car. I guess, you know, sure. Okay, I'll do it. I'll do it, I'll go. I'll just figure out my studio that's just starting to work and I'm finally starting to make money, my business in Florida that I've already put on the line for mom and spent a month in DC uh, while you were like filming your show. You know what I mean? Like it's always, her, her stuff is always important, mine's not. I have the chills, okay. So staying on topic. So I'm like, okay. Like I can't see my sister cry like this and and she's been clearly mind warp fucked by this Meredith chick. And okay. So we go back to my apartment. And she's like, so where are the drugs? I'm like, you know, in that time I'm 29. And I was never really, like I'm a, you can tell, I'm a hyperish person. I don't need extra energy. Um, but, I, but in Miami, it's like easier to get blow the weed, it's weird. Like, I'm glad that I don't live there for that reason, you know, it's not a thing of mine. But pretty much always I would have some there, but at that point I was really into the studio. Like I didn't, I wasn't doing it. So I was mostly just smoking weed. So I had like weed in four different places. And I, and I, oh, I had Xanax, like I had seen a, a psychiatrist and a psychologist, all that got expensive. So now my dad was just getting it from my uncle who was sending it to me every month. I took one every morning, like basically what I'm prescribed now. Um, like if I need it. This is funny telling this, but at 23 minutes, I'm gonna, um, I think, you know, my heart, but I like, so there's trauma in some of that. So my heart was tempted and probably it did rise. Okay, so I gotta shorten that. <laughs> well, let me wrap it up. I get on the plane with her and, oh yeah, we go to my apartment, whatever. And I get on the plane with her and um, I was like, well, there's one other thing that I have. She's like, well, what? And I'm like, like five Xanax in my... <laughs> sorry, not sorry. Wherever that adventure or that thing was taking me, I was gonna have some helpful friends. She's like, you know you can bring medicine on the plane. I was like, I don't really know anything for sure right now, crazy cunt. <laughs> okay. So intervention, that's a part of that chapter. All right.